husband and I moved to Honomu. Um, the very same week we moved there, Auntie Nona Beamer began a Hawaiian cultural program called Hawaiian in Honomu. And every Saturday, we gathered with a number of other people and had access to workshops in slack-key guitar, Hawaiian language, ukulele, culture, hula. And this program was run by Auntie Nona Beamer. <laughs> It was a fabulous way to learn about Hawaii and, and be initiated into the culture. And we became friends with Auntie Nona. I started filming when she did some workshops and grew to really care about this woman. When she passed away, so many people missed her and had stories to tell about her, amazing stories about how she changed their lives. And I wanted to do something in her memory. The lessons of life that she gave me were even greater than any so-called like material that she taught me or dances or chants, it was about life. She was so full of love. Auntie Nona brought to life the hula ki'i. You know, we did workshops throughout the island here on Kauai, offering it to the different Hawaiian communities, and I'm happy to say that I was a part of that. When I joined Auntie, um, it was not for competition, it was just for the love of dance, the love of hula. And it was a whole different perspective in how we learned and what we learned. It was a wonderful time. And as a result, I've danced all my life. Yeah. I had edited from 50 to 60 hours of interviews of 30 or more people down to a two-hour film. And as we went through different interviews, this historical significance began to emerge. She helped bring back the hula. Auntie Nona, when she was a student at Kamehameha Schools, was forbidden to dance hula. She came back as a cultural teacher in the 1960s, and the school still forbid hula. Nathan Kalama was part of a group of students who witnessed the defiance of the students who dared to stand up and dance hula at the largest, most important school for Hawaiian children in Hawaii. I considered going to Auntie Nona's Hawaiian music class like an escape, <laughs> because in her class, we were allowed to feel and be Hawaiian, um, even though during that period of time at Kamehameha School, it was not in to be Hawaiian. This is where I connected with my cousin, Nathan, and of course, Robert Casimero, Roland, and all of the renowned musicians of today's time were all there, you know, enjoying class with Auntie Nona. She always looked the picture of this, this beautiful, gracious, gorgeous woman who was not only gracious and gorgeous, but was Akamai. She was a special person and her story is incredible. One of the people who helped me immensely was Coleco Beamer Trapp. He was my mentor on the film and connected me with many, many people who cared about Auntie Nona. When I look at Auntie Nona, I see my kupunas because it's exactly the teachings of my kupunas that raised me. I see that Auntie Nona talking, Auntie Nona expressing her love through her eyes, through her movements of her body. There's so much mana of this uh, lady it was really unique. You can feel it. And, and I knew that there was something special about her. When I look at her, I see my own kupunas. As you know, Auntie Nona was of mixed blood. We call it, we say hapahaule. She had Caucasian and Hawaiian. She was very proud of both. She was able to blend those two ethnicities together. That was one of the charming things about Nona. She embraced everything that she was. Auntie Nona, from the very beginning, was a very strong, outspoken, and fearless young woman. She traces that to uh, her relationship to her grandmother. By tradition, Hawaiian kids are not assertive around their elders. And when I remember when I asked her, you know, where does this quality come from? And she said, it was my grandmother. My grandmother taught me to question everything. Inside her, she had always the, the struggle between the Western world 
not looking on Hawaiian things as being good and beneficial to the future of Hawaii, and then her own feeling that Hawaiian things were good. There's nothing wrong with Hawaiian things. That's what she had been taught as a young girl. And so, you know, she got kicked out of school a couple of times for doing hula, and she had to fight for, for many years to have hula and Hawaiiana, the study of Hawaiian things, to be accepted in the education system here. When the Dalai Lama came, and she was one of the kapuna from Maui that got to go um, meet with him, and of course, when they showed the pictures in the paper, Nona's sitting at his right hand, holding his hand, and she was talking to him about aloha, and that her theory was that everything was about love, and he, like, agreed with her. That was cool. It was a very cool thing. It was pretty challenging making the film on my own. I filmed, I interviewed, I edited, but the interview part was so rewarding that I knew I had something valuable. The response was far beyond my expectations. Tourists came up and told me that they really enjoyed it and they had never heard of Auntie Nona before. I would like to see Aloha spread through the whole world and um, bring this Hawaiian spirit everywhere. There's a Facebook page for the film Nona Beamer, A Legacy of Aloha, and I'd love to hear from you.